In this video, we are going to discuss about algorithms. So, what an algorithm is? It is a finite set of steps that must be followed to solve any given problem. That is an algorithm. Here, the keyword is a finite set of steps. There have to be n number of steps that will solve the given problem. Generally, it is developed before the actual coding is done because it helps the programmers in understanding the flow of data and the processes. It might be written using pseudocodes or a simple English like language that can be easily understood by programmers as well as the non programmers who are reading it. What are the advantages that it offers? It promotes effective communication between team members. A team might have programmers as well as non programmers because a system analyst is not necessarily a programmer. The algorithm since it is written in a pseudo code or an English like language is understandable by all the team members. It enables analysis of problem at hand. It acts as blueprint for coding. Simply it has to be translated into the code for the programming language being used. It assists in debugging. It becomes part of the software documentation for future reference during the maintenance phase. If any problem comes up during the implementation or the maintenance phase, then the people who are involved in it can look at the algorithm and see what the data flow or the process flow is and they can identify what could be the bottleneck. These are the characteristics of a good and correct algorithm. The word correct is very important here because we are using the algorithm to identify or come up with a correct solution. It has a set of inputs. It has to have set of inputs. If there are no inputs, there cannot be any algorithm. Steps are uniquely defined. Each step is unique in itself that is not repeated anywhere else in the algorithm. Has finite number of steps. You cannot have infinite number of steps. It produces the desired output. So, it will have some input, it will follow a finite number of steps and get the desired output. Let's take an example. This is an algorithm for going to the market to purchase a pen. First step, get dressed to go to the market. Check your wallet for money. If there is no money in the wallet, replenish it. Go to the shop, ask for your favorite brand of pen. If pen is available, go to step 7, else go to step 10. Again, a control structure which we have already discussed in a previous video. What does step 7 do? Give money to the shopkeeper, keep the pen, go back home. What does step 10 do? Ask for any other brand of pen and then again go to step 7. You have asked for any other brand of pen. And then again, you have to give money, purchase it, keep it safely and go back home. So, this is a complete algorithm for buying a pen from the market. Now, you will see that I have highlighted step 4. Why I have done that? I have done that to emphasize that that itself, going to the shop is a complete process in itself. If this algorithm were a part of real solution then this step 4 would actually be implemented as a different algorithm. Let's take another small algorithm, a mathematical algorithm. This algorithm will check whether a number is positive or negative. First thing, print give any number. You are asking the user for the number. The user has entered the number, you have read it, then you will compare it with 0. If number is 0, print you entered 0 because 0 is neither negative nor positive. If num is greater than 0, it is you have to print that it is positive. If it is less than 0, then you have to print that it is negative. So, in this video, we have seen how an algorithm is created. In the next video, we are going to discuss about flowcharting.